Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you all for joining. Super, super excited about walking you through a guide to issue management, best practices and techniques. All right, let's jump into it. Who am I? My name is Bill Dow. I have 30 plus years of hands-on experience. I've been in the PMO and project management space since 1991. Um, I'm a director of a large university in the Seattle, Washington area. Worked at Microsoft for 14 years. Uh, singular at and I've ran 10 PMOs across my career. In 2020, I was named top 15 uh, PMO leaders in the world. In 2021, I got down to the top three PMO influencers in the world. And in 2022, I'm in the top eight PMO influencers in the world. I've been a speaker, a presenter around the world um, from India to Las Vegas to Toronto to Vancouver to San Diego, you name it, I've been a speaker there. And I'm actually a five-time author. The PMO Lifecycle, Building, Running, and Shutting Down, Project Management Communication Tools, uh, The Tactical Guide for Building a PMO, Project Management Communication Bible way back in 2008. And then my last book, and the book uh, is recent, is 2021, is PMO Service Offerings. So really excited to be publishing under my Dow Publishing brand. Um, love for you to check me out on YouTube, my blog, buildoutpmp.com. And I'm really, really thrilled to be um, sharing this information today. So we got a great agenda. We're going to go over four big items. We'll talk about risk and issue definition. We'll go into the issue management plan. We'll break that down. We'll talk briefly about agile issue management. And then we'll do a quick wrap up and, and some more information. Okay, so let's jump into issue management. I believe it's one of the most underrated skills a project manager has in their toolbox, issue management. I can't stress this enough, right? So many people are worried about risk management and, you know, how do we track risks and how do we, um, you know, mitigate risks and stuff. And so from an issue management perspective, you have to really think about how important issues are things that are occurring right now. And so issue management is a really, really a top skill that a project manager needs to have, but often they under undervalue that and underestimate the importance of that as they execute on their projects. And so I really can't stress enough if you, that you have to be strong in issue management, have to be strong, strong in risk management, but you've got to really treat those as a critical part of being a successful project manager. One of the things that we often get confused with is, what's an issue and what's a risk? And so I pulled this right out of my book, The Project Management Communication Tools, and it says, is it an issue or a risk? And so I'll just get, I'll just briefly go over this, but I'll definitely give you a minute to read it. But one of the important distinctions, distinguishes that you want to be aware of is the difference between issues and risks, right? The difference between an issue and a risk is that issues have already occurred and have been identified, and risks is possibly that something that may occur in the future. So issues we're dealing with now, risks may occur. And that's a radical difference. So you've got an issue, you've got to be constantly working that issue until it's resolved. If you've got a risk, yes, of course you've got to be working that, but it may never happen. So that's a really a big difference and a real dis, uh, distinguish how you distinguish between the two. So I just want to spend a minute to really make sure we're focused on the right things. And when we talk about today, we're really talking about issue management. Make sense? Excellent. So one of the first things you want to do when you talk about managing a risk is create an issue, an issue, I mean, sorry, is an issue management plan. Issue management plan gives you the structure and the processes need to effectively manage your issues, right? So creating an issue log is not the same thing as having a solid issue management plan, right? They're just not the same thing. There's a lot of people that get that confusion is, hey, I'll create a risk log and I'll create an issue log and that's all really I have to do. And as I walk you through the, uh, the great steps and the really the details around the issue management plan, you'll see that an issue log and an issue management plan are really are radical difference, right? And so that's the, that's the key there is you want to have that management plan to give you that structure and give those processes to follow. It's not just about filling in a log. Make sense? Excellent. Well, there's seven really main steps in issue management. There's the purpose, there's the scope, management and escalation, 
issue tracking tools, the issue process, roles and responsibility, and resolution and closeout. So these are the seven things that you're going to do and really put together when you're developing an issue management plan for your projects. So what I want to do now is I want to spend a little time and go look at each of these. Right? What, what do they all mean? And as you're compiling this document, you'll actually have the, the pieces to put together to really develop a, re, a really solid issue management plan to be able to then therefore go forward and manage issues on your projects. Make sense? Okay, so let's start with number one, the purpose. You have to define the purpose of the issue management plan. For example, Issues are unseen, imp uh, impact the events or problems that occur during the project. Issues must be documented, communicated, and managed throughout the project. The purpose of the document is to set the standard method and tools for tracking issues on the project. Very basic, right? But it's a key component to really kind of get there, get out there, and make sure people understand why do you develop an issue management plan. Right? So you can use this purpose, you can uh, tweak it, modify it, but I think it's important to have a purpose for your document. Now you go into the scope. So the write the scope of the issue management plan. How will the plan be defined and how are you going to control issue management process throughout the life of the project? For example, the scope could be something like in all projects, there are always issues that come up and need to be addressed. The project's objective is to address issues consistently and uniformly, and this document will set the standard of what should be done to manage all those issues. Right? One item we cover in the issue management plan we want to manage consistently is the management and the escalation process and the resolution and closeout process. Right? There's a couple of these things that you want that consistent approach to that. So I think it's really important that you have a document, you defined it, you define the steps, and therefore you can have that consistency as you execute and you drive through your issues on your projects. That makes sense? Yeah. So one of the things we just talked about is the management and the escalation. So issue management can be time consuming, right? So the things are occurring to the project and they're happening on the project now. So if a project manager doesn't have a formal process, they can just be overwhelmed with all these issues and spend all their time managing issues when they really have to manage all aspects of the project. So what you want to do is you want to put a severity level around these issues. And therefore, when you talk about escalation, if you have a severity level and you have a ranking, then you'll know which ones can um, need to be um, escalated up and which ones can be handled at the team level, right? So when talking about issue escalation, we're talking about uh, we're talking about taking it to the upper manager or executives to help resolve. And some things can be done at the team level, and some things, frankly, do have to be escalated. Okay, so here's a sample chart. And again, this ranking can be um, really what you guys want to do. This is just a sample. You've got low uh, at one all the way up to four. Now, I'll just give you a minute to look at that. But you've got all the is issue uh, descriptions. And so using this chart or a variation of this chart is going to give you a great tool and how and to how to escalate or not to escalate. And you're going to be able to bounce your issues across that. So if it's a low uh, impact issue, it's not stopping anything, you're not going to uh, escalate it. But a two, a three, and a four, you're definitely going to go, hey, this project is stuck with this issue. We got it. We got to get it up to man upper management or to your executives. So it's a great tool. I've used it for years. It's a great tool to really help you understand how and when you escalate your issues. Now, the great thing about this is you take this to your executives and you'd have that conversation. You say, hey, we're going to escalate three and four to you. And and these are the definitions around that and really get their buy off and get their uh, opinion and approval that this is OK and that they don't want to see all the way from one to four. So I think that's really important that you talk with your upper management, you talk with your executives and you make sure that they understand when you're going to up, uh, escalate issues up and down and really kind of have that um, on the same wavelength. And then as you execute your issues, you know exactly when you go up. That makes sense?
Yeah, so I think it's a critical tool and it really prevents a lot of escalations that are going up that don't have to actually go up. Step four is your issue tracking and tools, right? So this is your issue list or your issue log. There's a million different names for it, right? But you do have to store a log of your issues, okay? And so you think about this, um, it could be really anything, but you've got some key uh, components here, right? You've got your impact, your probability, your severity, and you have your score. And what you're doing is your times in your impact and your probability by your severity, right? You've got your originator, your date open, who's assigned to. So a very basic issue list, a very basic issue log. Uh, but it's something that really stores that. You want to get that in a place where everyone on the team can access it. You want to get some good details in there. Of course, you can add whatever fields you want. I really like the impact, probability, and severity and doing that scoring. Uh, but it's up to you. Every There's a million different issue logs out there. Uh, but I think you have to have something. You have to make it available. Um, and again, you really do have to understand which ones you're going to escalate up and which ones that you uh, can just let the team handle. Okay. Step five in the process is your issue process. So what is the process to follow? And so what I've done is I've developed a six-step process on how issues should be managed on the project. So you're going to identify the issue. You're going to analyze the issue and do the ratings. You'll assign an owner. You'll look to resolution, uh, resolve it, so issue resolution. You'll close it out, and then you'll monitor and control to ensure it doesn't come back. So really, this is a six-step process, very easy to follow. Um, and again, you could go into details. I'm not going to do that today, but you can go into details on, on every one of these things, such as how do you identify, how do you analyze, you know, how do you resolve, that type of thing. We'll cover some of that, but just generally what I want to do is lay out a really nice, simple process for you to follow to make sure that you're tracking and you have a process to track issues on your projects. Again, this is not just about putting an issue log out there. It's about following a formal process and a consistent process to allow you to be successful in managing issues on your projects. Make sense? Excellent. Okay, let's look at step six, roles and responsibilities, right? So ultimately, the issue management process will fall to the project managers, but they're not going to be able to do everything. And so what you're going to do is you're going to want to define, right, this whole role, who's responsible for all these various um, issues that are occurring on the project. So team members who will be required to raise issues to the project manager for tracking resolution using that, uh, that severity chart. But not all issues need to be raised to the project level, right? Both either to the project manager and or to the executive. So there's a responsibility that every team member has to take if they find an issue to really determine where it needs to fall. Does it have to go to the project manager? Can they resolve it at that dev level or the test level, or whatever the case may be? Or does it actually have to go up to the uh, executives because it's project stopping, right? And it's not something that can be easily documented. you got to apply a lot of common sense, but you can use that severity chart, right? But again, if the team members are in doubt, obviously raise it to the project manager. But there's, there's really that roles and responsibilities that they, there's ownership for the people on the project to really understand where and, and how issues are escalated throughout the life of the project. That makes sense? Yeah, so it's really that kind of bouncing that severity level, using a little common sense and really figuring out what the right role is for or where that issue uh, should be escalated or not. Step seven is around issue resolution and closeout. So as the project progresses and issues are opened and they're closed, right, you need to have a formal resolution and a kind of a closeout process. So this is where the project manager goes in, works with the team, sets it to complete, Right. And the team and everyone agrees that the, the issue is complete. And then in the issue log, it's actually set to complete. So you want to have that formal process. You don't just want to have people randomly going in there and closing issues and opening issues. You want to really have that 
formal closeout process to make sure the team members and everyone's on the same page, but really understanding that there is a process to follow and uh, it can't be done randomly. Issues are too important. They're too and often impacting projects and the execution of a project. So you really want to have some uh, formality around how you close that out. That makes sense. Yeah, so do it in a team meeting, do it in a status meeting, but don't just have people randomly closing issues. You should have it done through the project manager. Okay, what I want to do now is just briefly, briefly change, uh, to change topics and talk about issue management in the Agile world. And so there's lots of, oh, we don't have to track issues, we don't have to track risks. Well, I really challenge that and I say, I think you do. And I don't think it's any different. And so when you think about the issue management process, you identify it, you log it, you clarify it, you remove it, and you monitor and review it. And so when you think about this uh, five-step process with Agile, it's identify the issue, log the issue, clarify the issue, and then eventually remove the issue and then monitor and review that issue. Not that different from a traditional project management, traditional waterfall, traditional projects. Uh, but when I look at issue management and an agile or a non-agile, I think it's really identical. I think it's the same process, the same rigor, that same structure needs to be applied. What happens in Agile, though, is we do it at the daily scrum, right? We look at this at a daily scrum, we bring up the issues, and because they are project impacting and they are issues and they're occurring now, you're going to have the whole team rally around it, right? The whole team will have a much better kind of team alignment to resolve these issues because they are impacting the project than maybe traditionally where an individual will go off and try to solve that issue by themselves. So I really like that about Agile because it brings that team approach to it. But again, it's really, really important to understand that issue management Agile and issue management everywhere else in the project management world, um, I, I believe they're identical. Make sense? Excellent. So let's summarize, right? So issue management is one of the most uh, complex aspects of managing your projects, right? These issues are occurring. They're happening now. And so again, I think it's really important to get that, um, get that rigor and structure around that. You want to understand the key components of an issue management plan, right? It's going to give you the tools to be able to track and manage your project issues on a continual basis and in a structured and organized manner. Agile issue management follows the same process, right? It's important to track um, issues consistently, both agile and non-agile environments. So don't let people tell you that they're not available and they're not something that they um, that is that you need to do in the agile environment. It's just not the case. Any more information um, in my book, Project Management Communication Tools, uh, on Amazon today. So super excited for you guys to check that out. Um, get uh, get with me, build out DowPublishingLLC.com. There are my two books, PMO Lifecycle, Project Management Communication Tools. Uh, get with me on LinkedIn again. Uh, thank you all very much for your time, and I appreciate your uh, time today. Thank you all. Bye-bye.